Welcome to the Marine Corps Suicide Prevention Podcast, where we address the physical, mental, spiritual, and social components of suicide prevention. I'm your host, Dr. T.J. Owens, Suicide Prevention Capability Section Head with Behavior Programs Branch at Headquarters Marine Corps. In this episode of our Connecting the Series, we will discuss the truly tangible things that Marines or sailors can do themselves in a time of crisis. These are techniques known as coping strategies. Today we're talking with Gunnery Sergeant Bianca Davis. She's currently an SPPC for the HNHS New River uh, Command there in North Carolina. Gunny, for those listeners who may not have heard uh, your introduction in some of the other podcasts, please tell them a little about yourself, what you do, your passion, for preventing death by suicide. Thank you, Dr. Owens. I am a Marine, active duty Marine of 16 years. I have an amazing three little boys back at home. Um, In my current degree field of psychology allowed me to um, take the role as a staff and CEO. I see uh, Marine Family Programs under the degree completion program. While in this role, I do fulfill collateral duties in support of MCAS New River as the Suicide Prevention Coordinator. Um, I believe my passion, as I mentioned, you know, was, you know, once you get into this role as SPPC, you see the numbers, they're high, they're trending, they're not getting lower, and um, the age group is getting younger, but it's not, it's not very many, it's not shall I say, it's not discriminated against anybody. It's happening everywhere. So um, that's my, I think, the reason why I want to you know, get into the field of trying to offer mitigation tools to reduce the number of suicide to help our brothers and sisters. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Gunny. Very glad to have you. So many people as we can get into the fight. Definitely appreciate it. So what we want to discuss today is uh, the act of teaching Marines tangible coping techniques for anxiety, anger, stress, and depression. And we're going to teach them how to do this through alternative cognitive behavior skills or techniques. Uh, Because of your experience and your education and training, you know quite a bit about these techniques. And we want to know if you can give us some examples of some of them, some of your favorites that you think that a, a Marine or a sailor could use in spite of their environment, whoever they are, or the stressors that they are encountering. And when you do, uh, do us a favor and tell us a little bit about each one of them. Absolutely. So I will tell you one of my favorites, um, box breathing. Mm. I've had the privilege of actually teaching box breathing um, to a new initiative that's coming out from Center Fit here in Camp Lejeune. Mm-hmm. Um, we renamed it to Tactical Breathing Method mm. because, you know, <laughs> you know, Marines, they like a fancy name. If it yeah. makes them sound tough, you know, they, they love it. So as soon as I told them that, they were just eager to know yeah, if it's tough what enough, that was, it. right? Yeah. Um, and then I quickly humbled them when I turned the lights out and said, hey, now you're going to learn how to breathe, right? Mm. But box breathing is a diaphragmatic breathing mm-hmm. technique used to help control stress and anxiety. It slows down the sympathetic nervous system, SNS, as some people call it for short, which is your fight or flight response. Mm-hmm. Right? Heart beating fast, you may have sweaty bones, um, anxious, or, you know, whatever that may look like mm-hmm. when under those circumstances. But you use this technique to activate your relaxation response, which is your parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and doing this, you can look at it, you can put a box in front of you. It's four seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, the first four seconds, you're inhaling deeply from your diaphragm, holding it for four seconds, and then releasing it for four seconds. Holding your breath again for four, and then inhaling again for four. And you do this three to five repetitions in order to achieve the effect of relaxation. For some, it could be longer. You may have to do a few more. Um, and then to challenge even others, like special forces, um, you may they may have a deeper count. So their numbers may be seven, right, mm-hmm. eight. Mm-hmm. But even in this aspect of this technique, 
it increases your VO2 max, so it makes you a better athlete, it makes you a better runner, um, and it gives you an immediate ability to handle situations of anxiety or stress seamlessly. You can do it at your desk. You can do it in your car. You can do it on a rug. Mm. You know, standing and putting your gear on before you jump out of a plane. Right. Like these are all techniques that you can use anywhere. So that's probably my favorite technique is box breathing, aka as you know, the means would like to say protective for breathing. Mm. Okay. Um, and then another one, progressive muscle relaxation. This one is probably another one of my favorites that you can do at the comfort of your, you know, wherever you are, right? And it's simply you tightening and relaxing muscle groups one at a time. So you can start with your hands, right? You can start with your, you know, from the head of your feet, your head of your body, down to the soles of your feet if you need to. Mm -hmm. But you're doing this in order to release tension from your muscles, but it's also providing you a real Effect or real, I guess, experience of what tension in your muscles look like, right, and what that feels like, so you can recognize it mm -hmm. when you're experiencing stress, anxiety, or anger as well. So doing this as you're releasing your uh, the tension from your muscles, then you begin to re receive that sense of relaxation, and you're able to kind of move forward with clear thinking, mm -hmm. right, or just letting go of what you cannot. Yeah, okay. that's, uh, I was listening to you right there. Sounds like it's even something that you can combine with the box breathing Absolutely. technique. Absolutely, you can. Yeah. You can combine both of those together. Um, the next one um, that I like is meditation. And Lord, when I tell you know Marines this, or even my children about meditation, mm -hmm. they look at you with this like, what? <laughs> I don't, I, that's not for me. They have a stigma of who it belongs to, but not for them. Yeah. Right, but sometimes when you get lost in your train of thought and you're sitting here in silence and you're processing your thoughts, there's some mini meditation, right? And if you take that and couple it with making it your routine when you get out of bed, mm -hmm. before you go to bed, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe even before P of T or C of T or before the bird leaves the ground to mm -hmm. bed, so because you were you're, you have to jump out of it. Mm -hmm. Whatever time it is, and with that deemed appropriate, there's an opportunity for you to bring clarity to your mind. Right? Yeah, it's, it's interesting how you you present something, just say meditation, because of stigmatism that we've already associated with the thing without even understanding it. Um, we we kind of have a resistance to it, but when you give us the education, the training, or the understanding that we need about what meditation actually is, mm -hmm. uh, then you know we realize that we do it more often than not anyway. Absolutely. Uh, so that's very interesting. And then, you know, just to I guess tag along with that, uh, my supervisor and she teaches sleep, and she talks to them about why. They go smoke when they're upset. Mm -hmm. If you think about what it takes to inhale a puff from a cigarette or a vape, you're simply breathing. Mm -hmm. But you're taking that deep breath in. You're holding it because you like to hold the smoke in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Then you're blowing it out with a little bit. And then you're going to gather yourself again and you're going to take another deep breath in. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? It looks like you're doing a little bit of breathing, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. And, you know, just having those relatable things to tell service members, and now they can relate to it. And now right. it seems more obtainable and relatable to what they can do. Yes. Right? So I always think about it like that as well. Um, if you add on to, in addition to meditation, you can have mindfulness. Like right now in the cognitive world, mindfulness is like this huge study of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. It is essentially a, a cognitive-based therapy, mm -hmm. right? That incorporates mindful practices that includes moments of awareness, meditation, and things of the sort. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about mindfulness, it's literally just having a present moment to be aware. Mm. Right? You can couple this also with box breathing or progressive muscle relaxation. But you're using this as an opportunity to use the acronym RAIN. Mm -hmm. Recognize 
allow, investigate, and nurture. Whatever that could be, whether you're planning for your next goal, maybe your goal setting, or maybe you're thinking about what future plans you're making in your career, or it could just be the moment that you're literally thinking about the argument you just had with your spouse, mm -hmm. or the disagreement that you had with your child, or your boss, maybe whatever it could be. Right, it's an opportunity for you to reflect and be intentional about what your next step is. Right. And then my favorite one that makes people look at me cross-eyed, especially my nails, <laughs> journal. Uh, right, taking the opportunity to write down your thoughts. You know, like, that's not the end. I'm like, but it could be. Mm -hmm. Dr. Williams, do you like to write down? I do. I do. You know, I was just sitting there thinking about uh, what you were saying about listing and uh, different things like that. And I'm a big uh, list maker. And uh, what I found is that if I, you know, get ready, I'm getting ready to go to bed, for example, and everything that's swimming around in my head is what I have to do the next day. Uh, so, you know, what I found is that if I sit down and I make a list of those things, I actually feel more in control of what's going to happen the next day. And what I find is any anxiety that might be associated with my thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, they, it recedes. And then the next thing you know, I'm able to sleep without any problems, really. And so it's, it's very interesting how um, just being knowledgeable about what that really is when it comes to cogniz cognitive skills, that's it, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I tell the gentleman all the time, if you write notes or tell Siri to make a list for you, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that is a form of learning. Yeah. Because what I want everyone to understand is in this line of work that we have, we can wake up a year later and not be able to process everything that we have accomplished. Mm. And I'm not talking about when you do your fit room. I'm talking about just in general. Like when you're thinking about what have you contributed to this world, mm -hmm. to your family, to your career, um, for it, all of that. So thinking about those things, journaling is an opportunity for you not to miss those moments. Right. Right. It's a moment for you to give yourself grace, self redirection. It's an opportunity for you to grow. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for you to heal mm -hmm. from trauma that you may have experienced. Um, but it's, it's actually a real moment for you to be honest with the person that's looking at you in the mirror. Yeah. And it, it's just listening to you there. Also see it as a way of just wrapping your mind around things, mm -hmm. you know, just getting a grip on the moment. Yeah. Right. Most importantly, it's a moment for you to really check your mental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. You're checking in with yourself at that point. Yeah. Right. Because so many people can check in with you. But I think when you really think about your math training, when you think about the stress continuum, in the middle, it says you are your individual responsibility. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for you to check in with yourself. Absolutely. And then my last one that, you know, kind of ties into all of that is cognitive restructuring, right? Changing the way we think. Mm. Right? We are known for dark humor. We are known for, you know, saying the darnest things that, you know, in another public forum or setting, somebody will be trying to, you know, commit us to. Mm -hmm. And I think once we, we realize that that stigma or acceptance of some of the things that we say or do, you know, it will, it's actually preventing us from allowing us to see the problem. Mm -hmm. Like seeing what's going on with our brothers and sisters, like truly, because it could be crying for help, but that's just him. That's just the way they talk. Yeah. He's always like that. She's always like that. She never talks to us. Like, whatever it could be, it's preventing us the opportunity to truly see, you know, the signs that we really need to see for us. So, changing the way we think will give us a lot, will allow us opportunity to have a more positive outlook on things, but also be a realist mm -hmm. as well. Right? Yeah. To be able to call ourselves out, but to also be accountable as well yeah. so i think that's a that's a big one it's not something that happens overnight but it's it's an opportunity to 
to write down those thoughts and say, how can I change this into a more healthy perspective? Yeah. As opposed to, you know, pessimistic outlook. Right. Well, again, it is, this is all very interesting and, and good stuff. And definitely something that Marines and sailors can use, you know, no matter where they are. Definitely uh, great skills that they can add to what uh, resilience they may already have. Um, so I was listening to the last one. It reminds me of the other podcast that we did, a discussion we had on normalizing. And, you know, key in normalizing the conversation around mental health is really changing the perspective of it. And uh, so here with cognitive restructuring, I can choose to think about a negative as a negative thing, mm -hmm. or I can make it a positive thing and, and really approach life totally different. There are, as we know, uh, many things that an individual Marine can do to enhance their personal resilience. Um, you can reach uh, out if you have the opportunity. Please reach out to leaders like Gunnery Sergeant Davis to find out how to obtain such skills as the ones that we've mentioned here in this podcast. Uh, Gunny is one of the many staff resources of MCCS that can provide this help for you. Um, thank you all for listening to the Marine Corps Suicide Prevention Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. T.J. Owens. Suicide is preventable if we empower ourselves and others with the knowledge, tools, and resources to do so. If you want to know more about how to get involved, check out uh, MNRA webpage at manpower.usmc.mil. Also, you can connect with your unit, SPP or SPPC, for more information or resources. Remember, if you or someone you know is in crisis or at risk for suicide, reach out, connect with CARE, and or call Military Crisis Line at 988.